Hi, this is Sarah from Coyote Tarot, and here we have days 12 to 17 of 31 Days of Tarot 2022, right? Okay, so right into it. This one's going to have a lot of decks in it, so I'll try not to waste too much time talking about nothing. So day 12, describe how tarot plays a meaningful part in your practice. So, this question was kind of difficult for me because I'm, I'm not sure. I've never really thought about it before, so I, I really had to kind of sit back and evaluate what that question means to me, first of all. I don't, I, to be honest, I don't know if it does play a meaningful part in my practice. Um, how I got into tarot was essentially because of COVID, because of lockdown, and it was something to do. And it was something that ended up ultimately uniting my friend circle because I started doing pick a card videos and just sending it to them. And, you know, it, it sparked conversations within the message group and whatever with them. And it was something for all of us to do and connect with over a period of time when we weren't necessarily allowed to see each other. We weren't allowed to go anywhere or do anything. So it kind of... I think it was a little bit of a saving grace, a little bit of a silver lining in a darker period of time, or not even necessarily darker, but like a, a, a very difficult to navigate time in our lives where we've never had ex had to experience this before. So it was meaningful in that sense. And, you know, since we've kind of, we've, we've come out of COVID, we've gone back in, we've come out, we've gone back in, but in those moments where we're out, I still have kept up with these videos. Um, engagement has definitely dropped off a little bit with my friends. Life happens, whatever, but it is still something that I religiously do for them. And some of them absolutely appreciate it and love it and follow along every week. Some of them kind of fade in and out and come and go, but it's been something for me to do. I've had to learn. I learned tarot for this process. I learned how to work YouTube for this process, and I learned how to use editing software for this process. So in a period of time when I wasn't allowed to do anything, I created something to do and I, I was learning. My, my brain was craving learning something and it saved me in that sense. And I've kind of kept going with it. That wasn't really the plan to keep going with it, but it's happened, so here we are. And as far as me personally, I do, I do enjoy doing this for my friends. Um, I enjoy the regular ones that, you know, constantly give me feedback and positive reinforcement. Um, so that feels good. But also, even if you're just like, you know, watching TV at night, just there's something soothing about shuffling your tarot cards. There's something soothing about you know, even if you don't have a question, I prefer general readings because I don't even know what questions to ask a lot of the time. So just while I'm watching TV or something, shuffle the cards and then when the mood strikes, lay a couple down and it's always interesting to see the messages and it's always usually a reinforcement of what's happening in my life at the time. So yeah, I don't, as, as far as like a meaningful part in my practice, that would probably again go back to my pick a card videos for my friend circle. That was meaningful and still is to me to this day. Uh, day 13, tarot decks that you want to work with more in 2022. So I might as well go with the one I am holding in my hand. Um, Yoshi, Yoshitani's Tarot of the Divine. This deck I got it for a steal on Amazon, an absolute steal. So I didn't feel guilty buying it um, because it was so quote unquote cheap and I really enjoyed the concept. I loved that this was about stories from around the world um, and I loved the cardstock, the linen cardstock. I think this is only my second deck with linen cardstock. I love the color palette of it. I love the art style. Um, but at one point I did think about rehoming this deck and it kind of makes me sad now because I, I'm so glad I didn't do that because I still do love this deck. 
I just haven't used it in a really long time. So it's actually on my altar right now. So it's my when I feel drawn to pull a card, this is the deck I'm using right now. So it needs to get, it definitely needs to get a little bit more love from me in 2022. Need to kind of rekindle that relationship. And I did purchase the book that goes with it, purchased it separately, you can't buy them together. It is phenomenal. The colors, the stories, I highly recommend purchasing the book. The book that comes with the tarot deck does give little snippets, but I'm like, we're talking snippets, like a sentence or two about the story. But this book and the write-ups really draw into how it fits with the tarot in more of a bigger picture. So I recommend this book as well. The other deck I want to work with more in 2022 is the Tarot of Oppositions. I've talked about this in a few of my videos. This one is newer to my collection. I got it, I think around November, 2021. Um, and the reason why I want to work more with this in 2022 is because I am new to the reversal world and I really want to decide if that's something that I want to A, keep in my practice, but also I want to um, keep working those muscles, those brain muscles on what the reversals mean. And this deck is very handy for that. I don't like looking at my cards upside down as far as reversals are concerned. So this deck eliminates that altogether because it's completely reversible. Um, some of them I don't necessarily agree with, like some of the more quote negative aspects, the negative sides I don't necessarily agree with, but they're minimal. They're, they weren't enough for me to not purchase this deck. So this is one that I want to work with again a lot in 2022 just for the reversal aspect of it um, to, to keep those learning muscles going and um, just help me with my reversal journey. The next deck that I would like to work with more in 2022 is another one that's newer to my collection, but not brand new. It's the Reflective Tarot. And really the only reason I want to work with this deck is just because I purchased it and I don't want to feel guilty about not using it. Uh, I've used it a couple times. This one I find is handy when reading with friends when you're on the go. So these are the more traditional cards card images with the tarot. They're the Rider Waite Smith images, but they just have a little bit of flair to them. They have a little bit of fun, a little bit of funk with the iridescence in the in the background-ish kind of. Um, and yeah, I just I just enjoy these ones and I like I said, I would hate to have purchased them for no reason. I did use them kind of recently with some friends. That'll be coming up in my January roundup video, the explanation of how I use them. So that'll be coming up there. So again, just want to work with it more because I own it and I should work with it. Now, similarly, similar um, meanings or reasoning is the Golden Art Nouveau. So I purchased the Golden Art Nouveau as well as the Reflective Tarot because I don't resonate with the regular Rider Waite Smith deck, the traditional one with like the yellow backgrounds, the gray backgrounds, you know, all the, the harsh colors and the harsh lines. So the Golden Art Nouveau and the Reflective Tarot were ways of me um, using the Rider Waite Smith, almost clones pretty much this one not so much more so the reflective tarot um but with a little bit of pizzazz a little bit make it a little bit more exciting a little bit more fun to look at um and this deck uh, i can't remember when i bought it it was in the last half of 2021 but it hasn't really got a lot of use um i used it in one of my pick a card videos for a monthly i think it was the month of december but other than that i have not used this deck as much as I thought I would. So because of that, it is one that I do want to use for 2022. And I do want to give it some love and again, not feel guilty about this purchase. So use it uh, in order to not feel like I bought it for no reason. And the last one on my tarot decks that I want to work more with in 2022 is my friend's tarot. Mine is in a tuck box. Uh, I am going to talk about, I'm doing a collection video that's going to be up shortly. So I am going to talk about my theory behind the tuck box 
in case you guys are thinking I have maybe purchased a bootleg deck. I don't know, but well, I'll talk about it in another video. Anyway, this deck is just so fantastic. I love the art style. I love that it's friends. I love that everybody can, mostly everybody, can relate to the images in the cards. You remember the episodes. You remember the characters. You can hear their voices in your head almost when you flip certain cards over. You can hear their laughter. And this deck, my friends did love this deck. I've only used it once. It was for a uh, monthly pick a card. So it was just one time and they all really did enjoy it. Uh, so for that reason, I think this is just a really fun deck. I thought I would be using it more, to be honest, but I've just been using other decks um, more because I tend to work with decks that I think fit the seasons. So right now, with it being winter, I'm using cards with more of a white feel to them, a white backing, a white background, that kind of thing. So this one might be more of a spring-summer kind of use deck but I do love it and it does go over well with friends. All right, day 14. So Oracle decks that I want to work more with in 2022. This list is gonna be a little bit shorter just because I don't own some of the ones I wanna work with quite yet. Uh, first on the list is the Sacred Destiny Oracle. This deck I purchased in November of 2021 and the reason why I purchased it was because it seemed like a really well-rounded oracle deck. The message, the keywords seem to be very straightforward. The colors and the image style, the images themselves, seem like they will work with the majority of tarot decks. Like it's not a very unique oracle deck. So it does seem like it will work with almost anything and the, the keywords will work again with a lot of the tarot cards and a lot of everyday scenarios. Um, so this is one that I wanna work with, again, with my pick a card videos, but also myself. I think the messages in this one are pretty straightforward and get to the point, so to speak. The other deck that I want to work with more is the Awakened Soul Oracle deck. I just love this deck. The cards are a little bit on the large size, but I don't mind them. Again, I love the messages in this one. I think that these are relevant to the world that we live in. They are modern, is I guess is what I'm trying to say. Like there's the unplug card. Um, there's, you know, there's just, it's, they're just relatable for this kind of um, world that we live in at the moment. I've had this deck for a while. It came probably in the first half of 2021 and I, I definitely do use it in my pick a card videos, but I wanna use it for myself as well. And I wanna use it more in my pick a card videos. It's just, I, I just feel like it's really relevant for our current world, our current life that we have. Now the other, there's three more. I do not have these decks in my possession yet. Um, obviously I wanna work with them more because they're going to be brand new to me. So I want to get the right use out of them and I wanna enjoy them. So the first one is the Prisma Oracle. I've ordered that from Amazon. The next one, and I've talked about this in other videos, is the Reclaim Oracle. Um, that one I'm really excited to use. It's on the way as well. And then after watching Lisa Pappas, um, I can't remember the title of the video, but it's the one where she talks about decks, upcoming decks, like whether it's mass market or Kickstarters or whatever. Uh, I saw it on hers and I was, uh, I was supposed to be having a minimal year as far as decks go, which I'll talk about in my collection video. Um, but this one I couldn't pass up. It's the Harry Potter, Harry Potter, magical something. Oh, I've got to look it up. Harry Potter Magical Meditations 64 Inspirational Cards Based on the Wizarding World Harry Potter Inspiration Gifts for Harry Potter Fans. So this is a pre-order. It comes out on February the 8th, 2022, which is my birthday. So I took that as a sign and I hit the order button. 
So I am excited to get that one in. I, I am a little nervous that it might be one that gets rehomed by the end of 2022, depending on how it looks. There aren't like really any photos to go by at the moment. So um, it, there, the description of the deck is interesting. I like the concept. Um, let the wisdom of Harry Potter films guide you with this card deck featuring quotes, activities, and prompts to help you bring the magic of the wizarding world into your daily life. Um, 64 cards, each of which offers the reader a unique question, prompt, or invitation for self-reflection based on the major characters, moments, quotes, and themes of the Harry Potter films. So I'm really hoping that it's not lame and it's not disappointing um, because I think I, I'm a huge Harry Potter fan and some of my friends for the pick a card readings that I do are also Harry Potter fans. So most of the decks I end up purchasing, it's because I think, oh my gosh, my friends would love these. So I need to rein it in a little. <laughs> And here we are, um, in January 2022, the first month of the year isn't even over and I've purchased three decks after telling myself it was going to be a minimal year for tarot and oracle decks this year. Not off to a great start. Um, so fingers crossed for me <laughs> that the rest of the year, I mean this isn't an indication of how the rest of the year is going to go. Uh, so we'll see, we'll see how that happens. Okay. So where are we? We are at day 15. Do you have any tarot self-care rituals for your personal practice? No, I am ashamed to say I do not. Most of the tarot self-care stuff I do is for my pick a card readings for my friends. And I really need to start doing that for myself. I've mentioned, um, I think in the last um, 31 Days of Tarot video that I really like the Sacred Self-Care Oracle deck, but I use it with my friends. I, I don't, I'm not sure that I've used it with myself. Maybe when I first got it back in, again, the first half of 2021, um, but I really need to start using it for myself and I really need to start, um, I think, journaling when it comes to these. And that's why I purchased the Reclaim Oracle. I have heard fantastic things about the Reclaim Oracle and how it is a great self-care and self-help tool. Um, so I really do want to get into that more with the Sacred Self-Care deck, but also the Reclaim Oracle when it comes in uh, and do journaling and, and, and really put in the work that you're supposed to put in with these decks instead of just like flipping over a card and being like, oh, okay, I have a bath. All right. And then not even do it. So I think um, that's, that's something I got to work on for 2022 for sure is incorporating or creating a self-care ritual in a tarot slash oracle practice kind of setting. So I'll do it. I promise. And last day for this video is day 16. Have you ever turned someone from a tarot non-believer to an enthusiast? Enthusiast? No. Probably not. Eh, depends on your definition of enthusiast, I guess. So with my pick a card videos that I do with my friends, I know that at least two of them have gone out and bought their own oracle decks. So not a tarot deck. I think tarot kind of scares a lot of people, more so in the sense that it's a lot to learn. It, if you're going to get into tarot, you have to learn the meaning of 78 cards. And I think that can be a little intimidating for a lot of people. It was intimidating for me at first, for sure. That's one of the reasons why I kind of stuck with Oracle cards for um, uh, about six months. So eh, maybe four months. Um, but yeah, I, I, and I, I mean, I guess a better way of phrasing this question is could be, have you ever turned someone from a tarot non-believer to a believer? That would probably be yes. And a funny story, it's funny that I'm filming this video today because last night I actually went on a date. It was a first date with a guy and I told him about my tarot YouTubing and reading tarot cards. And I tend to tell people, people that I go on dates with, early on because it, it weeds out the people who aren't supportive of me and what brings me joy and what I am passionate about. So they might think that tarot is ridiculous and they might not support it. And then it's like, bye. Like if you can't handle this part of me, then 
sorry, if they are supportive of it, we're good. Green flag, major green flag. So this guy initially, he didn't know what tarot was. I had to explain that it's 78 cards. I had to explain the major arcana, the minor arcana, and then I had to explain oracle cards and how they differ. So it was a long conversation. And uh, at the end of it, he was really skeptical of the tarot cards. He said, you know, I'm sorry, but I'm just a logical thinker. Like, those are 78 cards, and I'm obviously going to pull one of those 78 cards. So how can you say that that's a message for me when there's only 70? Like, there can't be an infinite number of cards. So first of all, you got to draw the line somewhere. But there's lessons in all of the tarot cards, I feel. So regardless of what's going on in your life, regardless of which card you pull, I think that you can apply the lesson in that card to anyone. Um, and that was kind of what I was trying to explain to him. And he actually asked if I had a tarot deck on me. And I said, well, yes, actually I do. I keep the Everyday Witch Mini in my purse. So I busted that out. He asked me to bust it out. And I did two readings for him. And he... The first one was kind of more like, okay, yeah, I can see that. I can see that. But the second reading I did for him, he wanted a four card general reading and he was blown away. He's like, everything you said was accurate about what's going on in my life right now. Like, that's crazy. And there were two aspects of it. The first two cards were relating to his work situation and the last two cards were relating to his like personal love life situation. So he was like, all right, there's, there's something to this. So that happened last night. So that's kind of funny that this question is in this video. Believer, from a non-believer to a believer, I don't know. An enthusiast, probably not. Again, I do have some friends who purchased Oracle cards, but Oracle cards are fun. Everybody can use them. So I don't know if it counts. So this question is kind of, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, so that is day 12 to 16. Next video, which full disclosure, I might be filming immediately after this because I don't know when I'm going to have time to film it in the next five days. So preemptively, I might be wearing the same clothes and the same makeup in the next video. Sorry. But it'll be days uh, 17 to 21, and that'll be posted five days from now. So I will see you then.